uh, rock formations below? Is that uh, what we're seeing in that area? Yes. The, uh, here the, you see a s two circles coming into the top of the view now. Uh, these are either volcanoes or, or um, effects from inside the Earth producing circular features. Uh, we think this is the Big Bend area of... Uh, uh, Texas, Big Bend National the Park, Big Bend National Park, and that I'm pretty sure is uh, Lake Amistad on the left. And all the lines are uh, uh, heavily modified geology produced by the uh, uh, continents bumping into one another. And so those are the up-pushed parts, which are now high and uh, covered with trees. So that they look dark green another lake right in the center, so we're in northern Mexico here, moving southeast. Don't recognize that city in the, on the left side, the bright patch, but it seems to be on the uh, Texas border near a lake. Uh, the city of Monterey is on the right-hand side next to those strongly foliated dark lines of the mountains. Monterey is the second largest city of Mexico with a big island steel industry, huge population there. And here comes a, a cloud mass related to a jet stream, probably. And here comes the Gulf of Mexico, top left, with the Laguna Madre, as it's known as the lagoon, just on the, ins on the inshore side of the coastline, just south of Brownsville, this would be. view is going rapidly down into Mexico towards Tampico and Veracruz. Local rivers bringing sediment into the sea and producing a lighter blue close to the coastline. Here we're flying out over the open water of the Gulf of Mexico, the westernmost Gulf of Mexico, also called the Gulf of Campeche locally. The, the trend of this track should bring us to land quite soon in central and southern Mexico in the Yucatan area. The, the crews use a, a, a camcorder for high-definition television on board. Um, this is a very steady view, so obviously the camera held somewhere for this one, but you see some that are obviously the crew holding it by their hand, shooting imagery out the window. Yes, uh, it's nice to think of them interacting with the with the planet this way, but it can produce some some jiggles in the photography in the in the, in the video. So uh, we, we think maybe that they secured the camera in these very stable views. I, am I right there, James? Big sediment plume here at the in the Gulf of Campeche. That's in southwestern Gulf of Mexico. Playa del Carmen is the little town on the island, that long thin island on the left of the view an oil-producing center. This is the, the center of Mexico's oil production, onshore and offshore. So we're proceeding here southeast uh, across the Yucatan Peninsula, which is very often under cloud, as you see. Obviously, imagery of Earth is taken by a, a variety of sensors and, and remote sensors and satellites in addition to the astronaut imagery collection that is gathered on shuttle and station mm -hmm. missions. What are some of the benefits of astronaut imagery? Uh, the, the first one that comes to mind just as I, as I look at this is the effect of uh, 
the viewing angle on s the, the sun glint point, which reveals so much about exactly where, I mean, to, to a level of very high definition, exactly where water is actually to be seen. And of course, um, patterns within the ocean are really only seen in sun glint. Uh, there are, I think there's one sensor that can do the same kind of thing, but the astronaut has the ability to look around and, and uh, see features uh, and do it in a, in a dynamic way and choose for us. We get a lot of data. And if the astronaut acts as the kind of sieve at an, at an early stage in the data collection, we receive much less data, but the quality of the data is much higher because it's been processed by a human. So it must be much more of a discovery. Moment. Yes. Yes. Uh, here is the Gulf of Fonseca. Um, which is a gulf in Central America, so this is the Pacific coast. We're flying out into the Pacific right now, and this might be Guatemala, uh, lower left, southernmost Mexico, moving on into Honduras. see a coastline coming in at the top of the view. This is, uh, I recognize these peninsulas, especially the one coming in right at the top of the view, as the Nicoya Peninsula uh, of Costa Rica. Our Costa Rican astronaut has gotten us all interested in the country of Costa Rica. Uh, some cloud out in the Pacific Ocean on the right there. And features within the ocean, you can uh, it pr produces a, a variegated kind of look to the ocean surface, which you just don't see where out of the sunken point. If you look top left, you don't see any of those features in the sea at all. And the next little peninsula in Costa Rica is coming in immediate, uh, far top left, which is the Osa Peninsula with lots of cloud. These the land surfaces almost always have a lot of cloud on them in Central America. Of course, your office trains astronauts prior to their flight for Earth imagery. Just briefly, what types of training are they given? What does that consist of? Really? We give them quite a variety of training. Uh, we, we talk about cities, obviously, which are relatively easy to see. We talk about uh, river patterns. We talk about impact craters uh, to do some, some planetary comparisons to help us understand what we're seeing on Mars. Um, we look at icebergs. We look at ice sheets in South America, uh, North America, uh, and of course we look at lots of ocean features. I've mentioned um, uh, the sun glint uh, capability that the astronauts have, and the, the Earth is three quarters ocean or more. So uh, they have all that kind of training uh, that's going to help them understand what they see as they fly by. And this, uh, this uh, uh, often. Uh, photographed subject for astronauts on flights that uh, occur over the summer? Yeah. Absolutely, of course. Uh, it's summer in one hemisphere or the other. Uh, so here comes uh, a beautiful circular feature, which uh, is a hurricane that can be uh, hundreds of miles across. Uh, you, the center of the hurricane just coming into the view now. This is Hurricane Florence, uh, which uh, was passing by Bermuda a couple of years ago, uh, and it's a beautifully formed uh, hurricane. You can see the, the circularity of it, and lines going at right angles like spokes from a wheel are, is, are the outblow clouds of the air comes whooshing up through the, the, the center of the hurricane and then goes out sideways across the top, whisking away the, t the cloud on the top of the uh, of the huge mass. And I know there are quite a set of striking still images of hurricanes that have been taken by astronauts looking right down into the eye, very close views. They are a favorite feature when you've uh, uh, been looking at land that's hard to see through scrappy clouds. When you see a, a, a huge, powerful feature like this, the astronauts do shoot them a lot. And we have had some detailed views looking right down the eye, looking at the eye wall, in fact, and even looking, even I seem to remember, uh, views of 
um, breaking waves on the sea surface at the bottom of the eye. Amazing detail. And I think uh, I would like to point out, Justin, that I uh, want to thank you again very much for lending us your expertise uh, and your familiarity with the planet, which is uh, quite fascinating and amazing. And uh, that your entire imagery is available on the Internet, uh, or most of the collection, with some striking examples of, of still imagery of the Earth at uh, http colon slash slash eol dot jsc dot nasa dot gov slash sseop slash efs and uh, also you can get there just by going to www.nasa.gov thank you for having me thank you james